Hey, welcome in everybody to this edition of the Grittiest Take, and I am joined by Andrew tonight as we break down the Flyers. What Mike Missanelli would have got right as a three to one win if we didn't blow it and go into overtime. But you know, we still got the win, so I'm sure he'll be happy about that tomorrow, just like we all are, unless he bet on it. Um, <laughs> then, uh, so he'll be happy about that, just like we all are. But Andrew, how you doing tonight after a nice Phillies win with the Phillies banner behind you, six nothing, and a nice Flyers with three and OT? Honestly, tonight didn't matter what the Phillies did because as long as the Flyers walked away with the win, that's all we cared about. Um, but now it feels good to be able to breathe again. You know, I'm sure you were having heart attacks like I was. With uh, each save Hart was making in overtime, because uh, some of them were just phenomenal. I don't know how he made some of them, which we'll get into in a little bit. I don't know how he made that one in his legs. I thought but, that went right through his legs. Oh, uh, so. the one he looks behind himself. He, yeah. didn't, he I don't think he knew he saved yeah. it. I was like, oh, crap. I looked like he had it at first, and I see him look behind. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I thought it went in. I'm like, oh, no, no. He didn't call a goal, so it couldn't have went in. Um, but tonight, I mean, who impressed me? Well, Jeroop had a goal assist and four shots. So uh, he's been ridiculous. Voracek looked aggressive again in this game. Who's had a down series. He didn't get a point, but he's had a down series and looked good again. But a big thing going into next game, we have to monitor is it looks like Katoria injured his knee. Uh, it looked like a knee. So that's not the, that's probably the worst thing you want to have injured. So uh, how, do you think that will affect us? Because I think obviously have losing a player like that affects us and we hope Raffle can come back to replace him by next game since he's also a defensive whiz. Yeah, uh Raffle, he's looked good. I think he's gonna definitely be the, the replacement here, assuming Kateria can't go on Thursday. Um we'll see what the actual injury is. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think I, I think your only option really is Raffle. I don't really see anyone else. I mean, obviously I have other guys, but I think he's a clear cut favorite to get that spot going forward. Um, it's interesting. I, I mean, obviously you don't wish for any injuries, but it's interesting how Criteria goes down today, and then so does uh, what's his name Bar- Barzell uh, from the Islanders, another mm-hmm. key player, which probably in terms of importance to teams, I'd say they're pretty similar, right? So. Um, I'm mean, correct me if I'm wrong if you disagree, but I'd say they're pretty close to similar. So it, it, it was weird to see them both go down fairly close on the game, right, to each other, I think, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, and Barzol. So it was very, that play, very odd timing for everyone. That play, you could see G even went. Like, you saw his reaction because he hit him on a foul through. You can't that, – that just yeah. happens in hockey. But you saw his reaction when he looked at it on the big screen. He was like <sighs> – like, he even reacted like that. Yeah. Damn, I did not mean to do that. Um, so uh, that, yeah, that was just one of those plays that just unfortunately you get clipped in a bad spot. It looked like on his eye too. So hopefully he's okay. Um, and we're monitor that as well coming into the next game because that's a big effect on the Islanders. Just as Cooch would be a big effect on our team. But I agree with you. Uh, Raffle, assuming he's healthy, um, would be the guy that you would have to replace Couture. If he's not healthy, then you have to put Bunneman back in because Bunneman's actually good on defense and can play on the PK and do all that good stuff where obviously Morgan can't and he hasn't played in five months. So um, yeah. I don't think you're going to put – yeah, uh, Couturier got injured. Uh, Morgan, we need you to play the second line. Excuse <laughs> me. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that would be Bunneman and Lauren would move back to the second line probably if Cooch was out would be my guess because he already played. We Look how well – he played with Jake and G already. He won the freaking game for us. So I don't see why you want to go back to that. No, no I agree with you. I think um, you got to go back to it. I mean, you won the night. You got to stick with what works, and hopefully AV does. I, he One thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit is he loves to loves to change those lines. Um, so I'm not convinced he's going to go back to what works. Um, Except for loves- that line. He's never changed who's been with <laughs> – <laughs> That's yeah. the only line. It's been Giroux, Couturier, and Voracek for good or bad. <laughs> Where yeah, it's got true. good these last two games. So I'm assuming he's going to go, okay, well, I put Lawton in with them. Why would I switch that up when Scott Lawton won the yeah. game? Uh, so well, that would be my guess. And for the most part, it was a very well-played game, and I really liked what was going on. I mean, you can't afford – I mean, you got lucky tonight in the sense of – you can't afford what happened at the end of that third period. 
You're the, you're elimination game. You can't. You what did you say? Same thing happened in the second game. Remember, we were up, then we won an OT. <laughs> Yeah, but I can forgive that a little bit more because at that time, obviously, the season isn't over if you lose. You're in an elimination game and your back's against the wall. You have a 3-1 lead. I don't know how you get caught flat-footed twice. The one goal I blame on Hart. The other one was the defensive letdown. But, hey, all in all, you did what you had to do in overtime. I thought they came out very uh, very aggressive and, and fiery in overtime there uh, <laughs> to start that. And you saw them get aggressive, a couple of hits, a lot of scoring chances. I don't know about you. If you thought this too, but I was watching that game. I think it was a minute or two before we scored. Well, as we scored the game winner, they brought up the shots of uh, and goal in overtime. And it said we had like one or two, and I'm like, it seems like we have a lot more than that. Maybe just because we had a lot of chances, and we were just maybe just missing the, the goal or whatever. But I, I, think I, I thought was, we had, yeah. I thought we had a lot more score or shots than what the, the, the broadcast was showing, but. I thought our chances were really good in overtime. I thought the offense looked a lot better in overtime than it did in a lot of these other periods we've witnessed in these first five games. Um, finally, again, very very encouraging sign today. You see Giroud get one. You see JVR get one. Uh, hopefully that gives them momentum and keeps giving the confidence they need into these future games. But uh, I was very pleased with that overtime period. I was, too. That's the best we played uh, for the most part, other than those couple rushes for the Islanders uh, on five on five. And that was also when Niskanen forgot to guard somebody again. Uh, So uh, hopefully he doesn't keep doing that because he played a better game, but he still played a off game for Matt Niskanen. So he's a guy talking about someone that I would like to see still get better. Um, He's a guy that you would like to see – not turn over the puck mm-hmm. as much as Federer <laughs> just leave it in front of the net. Um, so that's something I'm still waiting. And I'm also waiting for Justin Braun to remember how to clear the puck out of his own zone. Uh, but other than those couple things, we played a much better game tonight and looked a lot um, better other than on the power play. But that's just that's just the lost cause. I, I give up on the power play. Out play this uh, so the... Uh, I think, I don't know what's going on there. I think at this point, in order to get the power play going, you almost have to put Ghost in, but then you have to figure out what defenseman you're taking. Well, it will be Justin Braun. Uh, uh, one thing I think on the power play is, honestly, it's almost similar to the way they're, they're playing five on five. Like They're moving the puck. They're starting to get that a little better, and you have a lot of different scoring chances, I feel like, on that power play. They're just not capitalizing. Like That power play we had in overtime, I thought we had multiple different scoring chances. They just can't find a way to get it past yeah it's just it's very weird because they've been so good on it all year and now you're struggling so it's a very obviously bad timing for it to happen but honestly outside of um the like the couple games in the canadian series for the most part i feel like the power play is starting to turn around and you're getting all those chances it's just you can't buy it you can't buy a goal right now at times obviously um not the power play is what i'm talking about yeah Yeah, I mean, this game was the game I honestly thought it was going to fall into place, that they would probably get the power play goal to win it because you figured James Van Reems scored, Drew scored. So it was kind of like, okay, everything we want to happen is happening. Uh, So I thought that – and Philip Myers continued to be an absolute monster. Um, So, you know, shout out to him. (laughs) Uh, So I think – that was a game that I thought was going to fall into place. Another thing I have to say is TK played very aggressive today and looked a lot better. He had a perfect pass to Lawden, who didn't score on that one in OT, but, uh, and then had a two assists along with this says four shots. I feel like he had more than that, but we'll go with that. So four shots. Um, and, uh, so he played a very productive game. That line was moving before Lawden got moved up. Lawden, uh, Van Riemsdyk and TK was a very productive line. And I like that pairing. So that's, well, Lawton might have to move up. If Cooch is healthy, that should stay the same. If Gatorade is not back, obviously Lawton's going to have to move up. Um, and then personally, I don't want Derek Grant back at 3C because he can't play 3C in the postseason for some reason. So um, I would honestly play because of how aggressive and how physical and how just tenacious of a player is because he knows that's how he's playing for playing time. Mm hmm. I would put Bunny with them and see what happens, because uh, he's playing with uh, guy. Well, he's playing with TK that he knows he has to keep up with, 
And then he's playing with Van Riemsdyk, and you have another big body who's actually fast, where Van Riemsdyk's not as quick anymore. Bunneman can move. I think that would be a good line because you have a guy that's bigger at center and you have a guy that's bigger that can move with Van Riemsdyk, who's just a bigger skater, and then TK, who flies like the wind. So uh, For sure. I, I feel like that could work out if need be. If everyone's healthy, then that's a move point. Yeah. But, um, who, though, I feel like um, tonight, I guess I should also say uh, Sandheim again. <clears throat> was great that line of Myers and Sandheim, which I did not think going into the playoffs. Both of those guys are amazing, but I did not think going into the playoffs that two that our youngest defensive line would be our only consistent defensive line. Um, but you know, uh, it, it's very good to see for the future of the team that we have a 24 year old and I believe a 23 year old. Um, that's doing really good on our defensive line there to carry us uh, over the hump in these playoffs, really, and be our leading defensive pairing. I mean, we might still call Provy and Niskan in the number one pairing this postseason, but they haven't. They sure as hell have not played like it. <laughs> and uh, True. Sam and Myers have played like uh, the uh, number one pairing. And that's, uh, that's a great thing moving forward because – I think, like your reef said, and Myers is 23, so that's a 23 and 24 year old. That'll be with Provy in the future. I think you're looking at Provy, Myers, lefty, righty. Niski's going to drop down with somebody. It's either going to be with Sanheim and Niskanen, or if they really think he's just a veteran at this point, and maybe the playoffs are showing what he actually is at this point, and he just had a good season uh, for the age he's at then he might even be on the third line with whoever you have, Ghost or Hag with Niskanen. And then yeah. you put whoever with Sanheim next year, probably Zamula, because Zamula is going to be somewhere. So that would probably be how that um, shapes out, because obviously Myers is not going to keep playing yeah. second defensive line if he's playing like the one of the better overall defensemen in hockey as an undrafted guy. So... That that was a great pickup for the team. But in this game, though, who would have been I, – I think I know the answer to this, but who's the guys that you credit the most uh, for the win tonight uh, that really stepped up for us? Uh, it's your captain, Claude Giroux. He's getting a lot of criticism, a lot of complaining from the fans, one, uh, myself and my other – one of my other ones, uh, Philly Sports Now, I do with my brothers – uh, I kind of called him out a little bit, and I said, I understand. I, I'm, I've am i been defending him last couple of years in playoffs and everything, and I understand it's not solely his fault, and a lot of other guys need to step up as well. But he, I, I know there's other stuff besides scoring that needs to happen, and my brother tried to say it and alluded to it was kind of setting up the rest of the team for, for passing and stuff like that. He had the five assists. But to me, he just hasn't been there like he usually is. He hasn't done all that other stuff that he usually does in other games this year. So I, I think him, and I think he heard all of it, and, and you hear how frustrated he is in, in the press conferences. I know you I know you do as well. Yeah. So I think for him to come out here in this game five, he knew this team was up against what they were up against. Um, to get a plus minus, I, I, again, not the biggest stat to go off of, but get a plus minus of two tonight, have four shots total, have an assist, have a goal, have a hit like I, I think you saw the Giroux we wanted to see tonight and, and without that performance he had you know win this game I think he really stepped up big time tonight and obviously you could pick the lot and with the game winner you can pick other guys but I thought he really stepped up his game um and I, and I think he'd be my my uh, big step up of the game here as the captain as the leader I think he really sent a, a good message here and and, you know, you can have those wins where, you know, it's like, okay, they found a way to scrap out the win, but they're not going to come back. You know what I'm saying? But I think the way he showed up, Konechny showed up, um, JVR, like the, way, the, way, the way he really, yeah, JVR, the way he set up, he really set up and he really sent the message on the early going. I know he didn't get the goal until later in the game, but but from the get-go, you realize, to me, he had an extra step. He had the extra energy. Had had some speed back a little bit. I think he sent a message to the team. I think I think the team really rallied behind as a whole group here tonight. And honestly, this isn't one of those wins where I've walked away from and been like, you know what, it's just a win. It feels good to extend the series, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, I think this win is a momentum builder. I think the way some of those guys stepped up, obviously outside the late game collapse, which is unacceptable, but the way they played overall, 
I really think this was a message and, and a game that says we're not done here. We're going to go out and fight these next two, well, hopefully two games, but obviously at least one more game. Mm-hmm. No, that's a very good point. And um, I think my guy would be uh, Van Riemsdyk because he's another guy we wanted to see get going. He played around about 18 minutes um, and looked pretty good on the ice today and looked a little bit quicker than he did in the past game. So I don't know if that was just he was more confident today. So uh, he definitely looked like he was moving around better. So the guy for me that stepped up would be uh, Van Van Riemsdyk. And then... I would say he only had an assist on the day, but he did have six shots. He was in it a lot. Uh, Hayes played really well along with the line that he manned with Farabee and Pitlick. Uh, he was running that line really well. He just only had one point to show for it, but, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes that happens. And, again, Sanheim and Myers are playing amazing, so I wanted to – and then Provorov played a pretty solid game. He played 29 minutes. If you just look at these numbers, it shows you Matt Niskan is struggling. Because he's on the first defensive line. He played 24 minutes and 31 seconds. Travis Sanheim played 27 minutes, over tw- almost 28 minutes. <laughs> and he's not nah. on the first line. Uh, Braun even played 20 minutes for some reason. Um, so, well, I think then, it's what you just said with him struggling. You need to finally give that minutes to some other players. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just I would have much rather gave it to Robert Hag with how much Justin Braun's been pissing me off, but that's okay. Uh, and then Myers has, um, looked amazing. So I just think these guys have to continue to play really well because eventually you would think, just like G got going and mm-hmm. Van Riemsdyk got going today, Braun, who looked better in OT. <laughs> would look better um, as time goes on. He didn't look good in the game, but he looked better at the end. Uh, where he would he would get better as time goes on as a veteran, and then primarily Matt Niskanen would have one of those games like G and Va- Van Riemsdyk had today yeah. and bounce back next game. That's what we're really looking for, because if Niski gets going and we win next game and it's 3-3, well, then that game seven you feel very good about because you got Niskanen going as long as G and uh, – Van Reeves, I keep doing their thing next game along with Lots. Uh, you got really got a good thing going there. So, yeah. one game at a time, though. One game at a time. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'm saying you need this to step up and potentially win next game because <laughs> he looked a little off today, making some um, doofus type plays a couple of times, uh, which is not a custom of Matt Niskan. So, I think uh, tonight we've went over the game pretty well. Um, the next game is Thursday as we have a day off, which is obviously nice for the guys to have a, a intermediate day there. And then for people that do not know, if the Flyers, uh, we said one day at a time, but they can't complete this comeback, Carter Hart will be going back home to play the next round. Because Toronto's gone. They're disassembled. They're done after this round. Thank you, Toronto, for being a great host to the Stanley Cup playoffs. We appreciate you, and we love you. Hey, um, I agree, but it's easy. Slow down. Let the games happen. No, 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 no. I'm not saying we're going to move on. I'm just saying, no matter what, thank you, Toronto. You were great. Uh, and then they'll be done. Everybody will be in Edmonton for the conference finals and the Stanley Cup, and then that will wrap up the uh, season. And then we'll be moving on, of course, very quickly and surely to next season, just to go into the calendar a bit for people. But we'll get into that more as time goes on. But I would say my final wrap-up thought is aggressive. We played aggressive today. Keep doing that. (laughs) Keep getting in front of the net. Keep showing that grit and keep firing the puck. Like Deuces Rogers tweeted today, the Flyers are – I forget what it was. It was like the Flyers are actually shooting and they're scoring. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like like – uh, it's it's like it's almost like saying, well, it's not rocket science if you shoot the where we haven't been shooting. We've been trying to play like Washington before this, where I think we might have eventually said, look, we can't play cute because the Islanders block every pass you try to make. You have to play by getting it out to the point, trying to fire it and getting into the slot and firing a slap shot and trying to go for a deflection or a rebound. That's how you beat the Islanders. You don't beat them in a sexy way usually. You normally beat the Islanders by playing a very tenacious, aggressive, let me get in front of the net and get deflection goals and rebound goals game. Yeah, uh, I completely agree with you. 
Um, I echo everything you said, and my final thought would be, yeah, continue to get in front of that net, continue to stay aggressive. Um, and as always, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe, um, comment, like, whatever you want to do. Reach out to us through social media, whatever. I'm AJ underscore Santangelo. But, yeah, please uh, continue to follow us and continue to help us grow as we continue to like to, continue to, like to give you guys this um, content that we provide. So please help us out in that way. Yeah, and I also made that easier on everybody. So it'll either be in the top corner or bottom corner. I change it on every video. But you see in the last 30 seconds a little subscribe feature come up that says subscribe with me at a Phillies game looking ridiculous right in front of this. But anyway, <laughs> uh, and you see that picture, and uh, you can hit the subscribe button right there. So I figured out how to make that easy for everybody because I'm not an idiot with YouTube anymore. So <laughs> – um, everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day and night and enjoy the games tomorrow and just enjoy all the sports. We have a lot of sports going on. There's some great basketball for basketball fans. Definitely watch that. That's tomorrow, right? Thunder Rockets. Yeah, sure. Be, yeah, 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 definitely. That Nuggets, that Nuggets, uh, uh, Jazz, excuse me. Completely out of mind blank right there. That yeah. game was insane tonight. Final score, I don't know if you saw this. Sorry, last thing, uh, 80 to 78. Imagine an NBA game finishing that in the playoffs. That was the final score tonight. Insane. Hey, defense wins championships. That's exactly right. But, um, so, and the Flyers have a pretty good uh, defense if Niski can get going. So, again, <laughs> taking a game at a time, but if we win next game. Uh, so, moving on, though, this has been the grittiest take. Everybody enjoy your day tomorrow. Enjoy your Wednesday hump day. So uh, peace out, everybody, for Joe. I'm Joe. That is Andrew. This was a great night of sports for Philadelphia. Finally, two wins for the city in one night. That's what we love to see. Peace out, everybody.